This is real television. on the rocks uh, a show called J and Beyond the Rocks uh, a show called J and Beyond the Rocks uh, of Bloomington Community Access TV uh, indeed there was a show produced by um, uh, two local fellows that shows J and Beyond the Rocks this is real television Whoa. <laughs> 6 6 6 hey so welcome to J and Beyond the Rocks this television show that you're watching right now i am J the, as you can see by the pin, the, the, the letter on my chest. I'm the bartender, actually. I'm the no. bartender, actually. <laughs> now, the editor of this program is one B. On the street and in the studio on the mic. That was not a joke. That was for real. This is real television. Oh, but this is real television, right? Uh, this is real or wait. No, this is actually reality based television. Oh, okay, as opposed to real television. Right, this is access television, which of course is not real. But we did have an experience with real television just the other day. It was called Studio Six. I'm Diane Ward. On today's Studio Six, we'll talk to the creators of the award-winning J&B on the Rocks, the much acclaimed and often condemned and always controversial program on Bloomington Community Access Television. Yeah, so we appeared on WTIU here in Bloomington, Indiana. It's kind of a university's uh, PBS, public broadcasting system affiliate. Um, and uh, we, what, what happened? Oh, they had us on their show, The Fools. That's right. No, they're not fools, but um, they, they featured us on, an, on one of their episodes of Studio Six. 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 This television show which features Diane Ward, um, who, uh, who's kind of a, uh, kind of a local celebrity type person a media she does, artist media artist she does she does this talk show called studio six 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 and to honor diane ward and studio six your bartender jay is going to mix a drink this will be called a mental ward uh, i mean a mental ward
Let's see. Uh, backing up just a moment. Um, so everyone's a little bit nervous here. Uh, we're trying to prepare to go over in a few minutes to make our debut on um, mainstream television. In yeah, fact, I'm uh, even wearing my hair in curlers. I've, I've decided that uh, I, would, I will uh, uh, allay my fears by having a drink here, right here in front of you. Wow. I'm just going to drink it straight because, well... What, is that Dewar's White Label? Yeah. yeah well, that's but an expensive a, scotch. Yeah, but, you know, you got to do something. You see, I might not even be on the show. But, you know, one must always be prepared for filming. Um, or actually un unprepared, which is really what I am. But I just look like I'm prepared. Now that you're unemployed, I wouldn't have thought you would be able unemployed. to afford such uh, uh, no, expensive actually, scotches. Well, what I did was I, I actually, this was, this is actually Clan McGregor scotch in here, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I transferred it to make it look like I'm a little more um, affluent than I am. Clan McGregor? Clan McGregor, yeah, the cheapest scotch you can get. You see, because I'm sort of a member of the J and Beyond the Rocks staff, being that I cook for them and make love to them and help them with ideas and things like that. But I don't get to participate in the glory sometimes. Oh, well. So anyway, we're going to be bringing our camera along and showing you uh, some behind-the-scenes footage of what goes on at WTIU. That's PBS, Public Broadcasting. They probably have a little bit of a different setup than, than we usually do uh, when we do our TV show. So watch this. Well, they cut plenty of basketball this year. <laughs> yeah. Michael Jordan and the White Sox playing football. Yeah, oh, all that, to know, right? know, that's that's your question. Question. Yeah. 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 Hey, look, there's me. I'm shooting myself. Yeah. Well, you don't want. Oh my I don't God. Know who I am. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I look like a fool. What am I wearing? Your show's gonna recognize me. <laughs> who dressed me? Oh, a surprise. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll be uh, bridging the gap. They don't Have a good show. I'm Diane Ward. On today's Studio 6, we'll talk to the creators of the award-winning J&B on the Rocks, the much acclaimed and often condemned and always controversial program on Bloomington Community Access Television. Also, Amish Style, a new book and exhibit which present the artifacts and the austere choices of the Northern Indiana Amish, plus just a sampling of the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater appearing in our area soon. That's all coming up, so stay with us. things straight. Straight. Straight scotch. Straight. Every year the Indiana Film Society sponsors a contest known as the Indiana Film and Video Competition. Winners in various categories are chosen from across the state. In 1993, the winning entry in the independent experimental category was a community access television program from Bloomington. J and Beyond the Rocks won with episode number 31, A Toast to Poverty. As a winner in its category, A Toast to Poverty was shown at the fifth annual video barbecue in Indianapolis along with other winning entries. The audience voted J and B on the Rocks the best of show. J and B on the Rocks is an inexpensively produced program that offers offbeat comedy, bizarre recipes for drinks, a vivid vocabulary, occasional nudity, and constant irreverence. Here are two clips from the award-winning episode number 31 of J and B on the Rocks. Oh, thank God someone's come to help. I'm, oh, sorry about the steam there. I got the vaporizer because, you know, I'm all stopped up and I got myself a cold. And... Mm. Well, I know Jay. Jay, could you mix me up one of them specialty drinks to help me out here? 
Please, Jay. Please. Please. So Jay. Christy Paxson says that she's feeling Jay, stuffed help. up, so I'm I'm here to help out because I'm the bartender. Um, I'm gonna mix her a drink, a medicinal drink, a medicinal brandy. Um, as a matter of fact, um, what you'll need is you'll need um, some boiling hot water here, which which we have, and I'm gonna turn off the heat right now. Be careful when you do this at home because the handle can be very hot. Yeah, yeah, don't burn yourself. What you need to do here is you need to take one of these things. This is a some kind of Middle Eastern cast, metal castanet, but it also works well as a tea strainer. Um, and take some of this cold banishment tea that you can get. If you live in Bloomington, you can get this over at the eye. Different things. Herbs. Herbs, yes. Um, you fill, the, fill up your Middle Eastern castanet with some of it. You can see it's kind of falling out there. And, uh, and put it in your cup. Um, then you'll take your hot water and pour it in there. Just pour in enough to, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, leave a little room at the top, about an inch at the top, um, because we're going to add some booze to this, let me assure you. I mean, like I said, uh, uh, I don't even remember when, when it was, but, you know, it's just not a drink if it doesn't have booze in it. Um, so, yes. Well, you let that steep a minute. That's what I'm supposed to tell you. Let it steep for a minute. Um, and then after that, after it's steeped a little bit, and you can kind of see that the, the liquid inside the cup is changing color a bit, then you'll want to add about an ounce of this brandy. The brand is not as important. However, we did choose E&J brandy um, for this particular drink just because we thought it was interesting that it's E&J and we're J and B. Cool bottle. And yeah, yeah. It's a cool bottle. It's like also it. fairly inexpensive. Um, <laughs> so... Anyway, add, wow, it smells good. Add about an ounce of this to your, uh, to your medicinal tea, medicinal brandy tea thing that we're making here. Kind of stir it around, keep, keep it steeping, keep it steeping. Um, and and uh, the last thing you want to add is just a lemon. Just kind of take a slice of lemon and, and uh, squeeze it in there. Whoa. And, and drop, drop it. Drop. What you want to do, once it's steeped long enough, you want to give it to your favorite Christy Paxson or other ill friend. So we're gonna do that right now. Look at her, Oh, look at the poor Christy Paxson here on the couch, all sick and ill and stuff. I hope this works. Sure smells good. Mmm. <laughs> Woo! Feel better? Oh, yeah! J&B, the creators of the program, whose upcoming show will be the 50th, have become local celebrities, even cult heroes. The, the stated purpose, purpose of the show is the glorification of alcohol and its responsible use. But in their own words, that's only a jumping off point for rambling discussion about politics, religion, art, fine cookery, and yes, sex. J of J&B on the Rocks, the bartender, is Joe Nickel, and B, the editor, is Bart Everson. And the man, who a few times has had to hold the shows off the air, but mostly gives the go-ahead to the team, is Michael White, director of Bloomington Community Access Television. And we're here to talk about, partly about putting the show on the air and the remarkable, the remarkable phenomenon that it is, an award-winning program. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for being yeah. here today, Jan. Well, and we are actually making a, a, probably the next, one of the next shows as we speak, right? Yeah, yeah that that's why we brought our video camera. Yes. Yeah. We videotape just about everything that we do. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, yes, Most we know. <laughs> As you saw, we brought our own camera with us, and therefore we have our own footage, you see, so we can add our own perspective, our own spin. We can show you the things that you don't get to see, the behind-the-scenes footage, the stuff that you don't see on PBS, like the teleprompters, for example. I'm just real confused. Apparently these things are cameras, but I, I guess now I understand the concept of a teleprompter. I never look, realized you were actually looking into the words. Yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. That's High tech. So you guys are working so hard to say yeah. all those words just out of your head? God, are you dumb? <laughs> yeah. This is real television. Wow. <laughs> this is the award. It really is a nice one. I want to show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised? We were. 
astounding. probably not surprised by by winning our category, but winning best of show when all these uh, rich people voted for us, um, that was quite a surprise, actually. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah, there were a lot of people with a lot more money behind their uh, right, right. It with. was it was they, they had uh, they had, there were about 250 people there, and they were all rich art patrons, very much unlike ourselves. We were about the only people there our own age, and. Uh, they voted us best of show above some professional videos and all sorts of stuff. Joe, so. where did the, Joe, well, maybe Bart, too, if I can get yeah. him from, yeah. I would want to say this. Some of your stuff, I'm, you just, it's remarkable, it's experimental, it's innovative, a lot of it. And, you know, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Um, Michael, <laughs> you, this show hasn't, hasn't been easy for you totally, as, as others that you air. Um, and they, one of the things they articulate well, and we'll talk to them about, about it in a bit, is their philosophy of, of why of why this is important and what access means. But we need to hear that from you, too. Uh, well, I, would, I guess I'd echo that, of course. Of course, uh, access <laughs> is important. It's all around us. Yeah. Um, um, access these days, in the old days, there was a soapbox in the park. And anyone who had something to say or something to share would go to the park and, and do their bid on the soapbox. That, you know, communities have changed. And now the park's still there. The soapbox may be there, but there's nobody hanging out there. They're all at the mall. That they're watching TV at home. And, and access television really represents that soapbox for people to share their art, whatever it may be, <laughs> and uh, their, their views with uh, their community. Bloomington Community Access Television, BCAT, Channel 3. You're watching it right now, actually. And thanks for tuning in. This show, JMB on the Rocks, is on every Tuesday night here in Bloomington, Indiana at 11. Bloomington, Indiana, what is it, you ask? Well, Bloomington, Indiana is the town where we live. It's all around us, and you're getting to experience all kinds of different, see, see that down there? That's what the camera operator, Jay, just tripped on. Yeah, our camera operator, Jay, just tripped on a piece of Bloomington. Yeah. And you got to see the resultant um, um, f f fucked up looking video, which we'll show again now. <laughs> Instant replay. Yeah, you're you're yeah, seeing it yeah. even as we speak. And you know, that wouldn't have happened ever if it weren't for the miracle that is community access television. So hats off. Here, take your to those guys. Off. Oh, yeah. Hats off to community access television. Wow, look at your <laughs> funny head. Ooh, that feels good. Uh, I, I am not a constitutional authority, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, however, when I've had to review certain aspects of the law, uh, be, whether it be state statutes or national um, cases to like see if what it is they're doing may have crossed over that, that legal line. And um, I mean, there are forms of speech that are not protected forms that you cannot express. Things like obscenity, very difficult to define. Fighting words, again, very difficult to define. Uh, child pornography, of course, and invasions of privacy. If, if it appears it might fall into one of those groups, um, then, not that these are child pornographers here, <laughs> no, no. but uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah. if it appears it may be in one of those sorts of areas, uh, obscenity is, is the big one, I suppose, and it's, as you know, very difficult to define. Then there's, you know, there's, there's jail time and a big fine, and the whole, the whole station, in a, in a certain sense, could go under from a political, um, you know, wh whatever sort of haranguing might come from, from that. Would, would you have an audience if you didn't shock? You it's not so much that uh, the controversy is what makes the show interesting is that we couldn't make a show that is about us and, and our lives without it being controversial. Well, there's this rule on television that, that you, can't, um, you can't drink on TV. You know, the, the beer commercials, they never show anybody taking a tug on the beer. Well, now, this has never been on TV before. I mean, I've, I've seen it all the time. Right. I've seen somebody, I've seen somebody like, uh, smoking, like, a, smoking joint a joint before, but I've never seen it on TV, at least. Except in maybe an anti-drug documentary. Yeah. If you yeah. go ahead and show that on TV, then that's controversial. Yeah. Six, 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 six. The number of the beast. You know, Satan was thrown out of heaven because he challenged the authority of God. He stood up for his own beliefs. He believed in himself, and he was thrown out of heaven. Six, six, six. The name of this episode, because we believe in ourselves. This is real television. Because we believe in ourselves. And, and not, not nobody, nobody else. else. And not nobody else. <laughs> Jay, I do believe that was one of the most coherent things that you've ever said on television. But, you know, um, you do have a tendency to ramble a lot. Not you, the viewer, but <laughs> yeah. you, Jay, the, Jay yeah. who's the operating who's, the camera yeah. right, now. Turn, right now. turn the camera around and yep. here I am. a look. Yeah. Aren't video cameras yeah. fun? Hi. Yeah. 
Uh, so what, what I'm saying though is this, this man, Jay, who's operating the camera, has a tendency to ramble sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he has a tendency not to make very much sense. I'm sure if you've watched this TV be be show before, be sure you've for. observed that. You've also observed um, little problems we have articulating sometimes, yeah, yeah. Um, like I just had there. Let's watch that again, shall we? This TV be be show before, this TV be be show before, this TV be be show before. Okay, so that was a little instant replay. That's the beauty of editing, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, what I was trying to say about Jay, though, and his stumbling incoherency, is that, man, that's a part of real life. Um, that's a part of reality. And so in a reality-based television show like this, you see things like that. You might not see it just as often on real TV. This is real television. Why uh, don't you see those? Because, um, well, because that's, that's the script. Question. Because that's the that's script. That's the well, non-reality sure. basis of real television. Oh, that's right, because Jay and I often work without a script. Now, of course, <laughs> scripts are fun. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, scripts allow you to plan ahead a little bit more, but we aren't particularly planners in a big way. Uh, we kind of live in the moment. We've tried to divorce ourselves from the past and the future. I don't know why, we just, we felt kind of uh, weighed down by them. And so we cut ourselves off from the temporal aspect of life. So we seem to have stumbled into a fairly nice neighborhood here in Bloomington, Indiana. We don't live in this neighborhood, obviously. I mean, look, that's actually a brick house that's kind of standing straight up rather than leaning to one side or falling yeah. apart. So obviously we don't live in this neighborhood. You know, so that's kind of what separates us from real TV, because real TV happens in the nice neighborhoods. People who make real TV make real money, whereas people who make reality-based uh, television make no money and have to wear gloves like this. We make virtual money. Virtual money, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm, I'm an unemployed caffeine addict, um, and uh, B is a, is a telemarketer. And uh, if that's what distinguishes us from, from real television, then I guess we're not real television. The basic dis distinction as I see it is between real TV on the one hand, like, um, like uh, PBS and the big networks and so forth, and um, reality-based television, which is what we are. Now, there, there are some gray areas. There's those reality-based television shows like Cops, for example, which are certainly there on, on you know, the bigger networks. Uh, they have a lot more money behind them. However, that's not really reality. I mean, come on. Uh, what, what am I trying to say? <laughs> oh, gosh, I messed you up by sticking my finger in your ear. Gosh, yeah, we just, we're nothing like cops, believe us. As a matter of fact, we're kind of the opposite of cops. Yeah. Robbers. Outlaws. <laughs> Outlaws. <laughs> what you're watching right now is actually a special variety of television known as public outlaw television. This has been created especially by us, especially for you. P-O-T. I don't think I even need to say it because I can just put it on the screen, man, when I'm in the editing booth. I want you to mention another person that's on your show on a regular basis, and that's Christy Paxton, who's one of the um, stars, yeah. I guess, of, of yeah. cable access, cable yeah. television. Yeah. Hey, Christy, how are you feeling? Oh, a little better. I'm just looking at my, at my Diane Ward triptych that I made after you guys were on Studio Six. This is Diane Ward. This is how Diane Ward smiles. And this is Diane's, she's a fashion plate. She's got dresses, she's got a budget for her wardrobe. I don't need a wardrobe. I got nice clothes from, from hand-me-downs, they're fine. And here's, here's the cap for <laughs> Diane's got her own snazzy logo. Diane's logo, yeah. It's not fair, she's got a better show, she's got a budget. Well, I'm gonna get a logo someday too. That's right, I'll get a logo. And I'll, I'll go to New York too. Cause I'm gonna get a logo. Did you get the logo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You really did get the logo. Yeah. I really think you guys are here. I can't believe the time has gone by so fast. And uh, with cameras rolling, I'll mm -hmm. show you how we get out of the show. So uh -huh. thank you all three for being here today. Yeah. Well, Good thank luck. you for having us. Good season. Toast. Uh, so kind of uh, a TV show about being on another TV show. God, it, it boggles the mind. 
uh, it certainly boggles my mind anyway, just looking at all these names. These are just all the people who helped make Studio 6 possible. And so, in a way, they helped make uh, this show possible, J&B on the Rocks, that you're watching now. Well, I hope they had as much fun as we did. So despite the title of this episode, 666, um, I have, in fact, fallen in love, and it's not with the devil. Um, there's this new person kind of, well, not new person in my life, but kind of a new love thing that's blossomed in my life um, here uh, as, as I've lived along here in Bloomington, Indiana. Gosh, I'm, I, let me. Have you lived completely. along? <laughs> oh. Can you believe the splendor in Bloomington, Indiana? Even in the winter, even in the harshest, grayest of days. We'd like to thank all the following slackers and students for their support. Mr. M, Blackity's buddy, the Florida sports fan, Christ with a Y Davis, Maynard Schmagtite, and don't forget the Buttermilk Kid. Also in the support groups, there's The Attic, Bloomington's only speakeasy, Nick and Pat Nickel, Tom Gurner, and Fred Rissinger, or is it Reisinger? Capitalist Money Grubbers, La Bamba's Mexican Restaurant and Amused Vintage Clothing, also, the Pizza Express and Homegrown Studios. And, of course, the Bloomington Voice and Joe Scholar Tutoring Services.